Number 15. From its position in the periodic table, determine which atom in each pair is more electronegative. Okay, and then we have A through G, so that's perfect. So we have to figure out which atom between the pairs is more electronegative. What does that mean? Just as a recap, electronegativity basically just determines um, the likeliness of an atom pulling electrons to itself in a bond. So basically, if you had two atoms, right? Let's just say that I have a yellow atom here and I have a blue atom here. And let's just say that this is atom number one and this one is atom number two. Okay. Now remember, for every atom, how do they interact? They always interact by electrons. So it kind of is in the name, right? Electronegativity, electron. So they only interact by electrons, never protons, never neutrons, always electrons. So there's going to be a space here where they're interacting and they always interact with electrons. Now it depends if they make a bond, right? Remember that a bond is two electrons, but if one has a higher electronegativity, that means that the electrons aren't going to be equally shared. Let's just say that atom two has a higher electronegativity value. Let's just say that it's, I don't know, three, as opposed to the electronegativity of atom number one, which would be, I don't know, let's just say one. So when these um, interact with their electrons, it wouldn't be a 50-50 split down the middle. Since atom number two has a higher electronegativity, it's going to pull the electrons so that the electrons are more closer to that atom. And that's all that electronegativity is saying. It's just saying whoever has the more electronegative atom between the two atoms that are trying to be bound to each other, whichever one has the higher one, the electrons are going to be more close to that atom. That's it. So let's go for it. A, is bromine going to be more electronegative or chlorine? Well, we first would have to know the trend. So here's my electronegativity trend. Negative T. You guys get the drift. Okay. So electronegativity has the same exact trend as ionization energy. So you remember your ionization energy trend? If we go from left to right across a period, your ionization energy increased, but also your electronegativity should also increase. So that means as you go across a period, fluorine would be the highest electronegative element as opposed to lithium. Now remember, your noble gases have very low electronegativities because they are inert. They don't really like to react with anyone. So it basically stops here. So fluorine would actually have the highest electronegativity and not neon. Now, as you go down a group, same thing with ionization energy. Ionization energy decreased, electronegativity decreases. So lithium would have a much higher electronegativity. It would want to pull electrons more towards itself than cesium. So now we just got to do the questions. So between bromine and iodine, which one do you think has the more, it's more electronegative, which one has the higher electronegativity? It would be bromine, because as you go down a group, electronegativity decreases. So bromine would be higher than iodine. So bromine would be, have a higher electronegativity. Next, B. Nitrogen or oxygen? Nitrogen's over here. Oxygen's over here. As you go from left to right, I'm, um, electronegativity increases. So oxygen would have the higher electronegativity. It would pull electrons more closer to itself, oxygen, as opposed to nitrogen. C, sulfur or oxygen? Well, oxygen is here. Sulfur is over here. As you go down, electronegativity decreases. So which one would have the higher electronegativity? 
oxygen. So oxygen wins again. It would pull electrons more closer to itself than sulfur. D, phosphorus or sulfur. Phosphorus is here. Sulfur is right next to it. As you go from left to right, electronegativity increases. So sulfur would have the higher electronegativity than phosphorus because it's just more to the right. So sulfur would win here. Next, silicon or nitrogen. Silicon is over here. Nitrogen is over here. Let's see. Now these are diagonal to each other, right? But let's see. If we go across, electronegativity increases. So technically, this row would have a higher electronegativity, right? This row as opposed to this one. And as you go down, which you had to do to get to silicon, electronegativity decreases. So which one do you think has the higher electronegativity? It would be nitrogen. So that one was a little tricky. You kind of had to use both rules there. F. Barium or phosphorus. Barium is over here. Phosphorus is over here. Which one do you think is more electronegative? Definitely phosphorus. Because as you go all the way down, you decrease. So you're already all the way low going down over here. And you increased going this way. So phosphorus would definitely be the more electronegative. And just as a rule of thumb, nonmetals will always be more electronegative than metals because nonmetals always want to gain electrons. So they kind of want those electrons close to their atom as opposed to metals who want to give them away. So they don't want electrons close to them. They want to just give them to the nonmetal. And then last but not least, we got G. I could do G down here. We got nitrogen or potassium. Kind of the same thing here, right? Nitrogen's over here. Potassium is all the way over here. You had to drop down, so you had to decrease to get to potassium. And as you go from left to right, you increase. So which one would be more electronegative? Definitely nitrogen. And once again, nonmetals are more electronegative than metals. So you could do that one as well. And that gets rid of this question. Yay! All right? So this one was pretty simple. Understand the concept of what electronegativity is. It's just basically the higher the electronegativity, the more likely that you're going to pull electrons closer to the atom who is more electronegative. All right? And that's that. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If it did, let me know in the comments. Um... Like the video if you like, subscribe to the channel. That would help us out greatly. We're trying to build the little community here. We're almost at 100 subs, and that's pretty awesome. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. This has been awesome so far. I'll see you guys in the next question. Bye.